Now in this video, we'll move to our next lab, the lab 2, where we are going to configure the same IBGP neighborship using the loopback interfaces. So if you're already continuing from our previous lab, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the configurations, what I did in my previous lab, by just giving no router BGP 500. So once you give this command, all your BGP configurations will be removed so that I can, when I move to the next lab, I should have some very basic configurations, whatever is required. So in all the four routers, I just configured no router BGP 500. So now if I verify my router one, if I give show IP BGP, you can see BGP is not running. And if I give show IP protocols, I don't have any of the routing protocols running. So I don't have uh, no protocol like RIP, EH, RP, nothing is running. I don't have any default routes. Nothing is configured except the basic IP addressing. So, so you have to start your lab from the basic where you have only basic connectivity and basic IP addressing as per our default topology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the BGP peering using loopback interface. Now you can ask me what is what is this loopback and why exactly we need to use loopback addresses. Now if you try to see here in my scenario I'm going to use loopbacks here let me explain you so why we need loopbacks so the first thing now router 1 is forming the neighbors so we got four routers like this router 1 is forming the neighborship with router 2 router 1 is forming the neighborship with router 2 with this address and router 1 is forming the neighborship with router 2 with this address and router 1 forming the neighborship with router 3 with this address right that's what we did when we configure router 1 is configured with neighborship router 2 1.1.1.2 now what happens if your interface goes down now router 1 forming the neighborship with this address if this interface goes down what happens now simply the neighborship will go down automatically because the neighbor will go down automatically because the neighbor address whatever you have used is down which means you don't have reachability to that neighbor then definitely it is going to affect the routing exchange between the two routers because if the neighbor is down then automatically it will not send any routes to router 2 which means the router 1 and 2 will not will not at all communicate because they don't have the routes inside the BGP table single point of failure so that is a major drawback with the previous lab which we did if you remember now now you can ask me okay so but in case of OSPF if you remember if I if I talk about OSPF we got router 1 router 2, router 3, router 4 if any one of the link fails automatically router 1 will use alternate route to reach that neighbor but here only the neighborship will be done but still you have alternate route configured but here in case of BGP the router 1 form neighborship with the physical IP whatever is present in the router 2 and if that IP is down then it will not at all use the alternate route because that IP is different and this IP is different so the neighbor IP when it changes the neighbor IP it will it is going to treat it as different neighbor or different router so that's something which will not work in our scenario so that's the reason what we are going to do is I'm going to provide redundancy what I want is I want to have redundancy in my neighborship if the router 1 is forming the neighborship with router 2 if this interface goes down automatically router 1 should form neighborship with router 2 via alternate root so that is what I want in this scenario so if you want to do that now you can you can think about other solutions like I will configure two neighbor commands on router 1 one will be this and other will be this address what is that 2.2.2.1 but don't do that because the router 1 will treat these two routers as two different routers because their IP addresses are totally different now the same BGP update we will be receiving from both ends and it's really going to add unnecessary overhead so it's not a possible solution it's not the correct solution here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure the neighborship with router 2 I'm not going to use this interface and I'm not going to use this interface so the reason I'm not going to use any of the physical interfaces is so the physical interface can go down any time okay so I can use any one address so either I can use this address or this address but these two addresses or the two interfaces can go down any time now if I want I can also use this interface also but that interface is also a uh, physical interface it can go down any time 
So instead of this, what I am going to do is, I am going to say router 1 is going to form the neighborship with router 2 and it is not going to use any of the physical interface. Instead, it will use a logical interface which will never go down unless and until manually if we shut down. That's the only way the link will go down. So now what it will do is, now router 1 will try to reach 12.network. Okay. Now it will try to go from this route and in case if this route fails, still this link will be up because the loop bag will not go down. It will automatically use alternate route to reach the same loop bag. So that is the main uh, concept what we are going to do here. So router 1 is forming the neighborship with router 2 loop back interface and the same thing router 2 also form the neighborship with router 1 using the loop back interface instead of using physical interfaces because the main intention here is to provide redundancy in the neighborship okay so that is something we are supposed to do here now for that loop backs is the best option so we are going to use the loop back or the logical interfaces for forming the neighborship now let us start so already I have a pre-configured loop back on the router 1 with loopback 0, 11.001, router 2 is having 12.001 and router 3 is having 13.001 and router 4 is having 14.001. So if you try to verify here in my topology every router having some pre-configured loopback, any loopback you can use. So the best practice generally we use loopback 0. So similar way if I check on the router 2 also on the router 2 also I have a loop back so I'm going to use 12.001 and on the router 3 now you can use any address it's up to you I got pre configured loop back I'm going to use 13.001 and on the router 4 I'm going to use 14.001 okay so let's let us start with the configurations now now if you remember the configurations are similar what we did in our previous cases but only some of the few extra configurations you may see in this lab so I'm going to say router BGP no auto summary no synchronization uh, same network command you can advertise 10 dot network which is in my LAN now probably you don't need to advertise 1 dot or 4 dot means it's not really mandatory because in case of OSPF or EHRP so if it is 1.1.1.1, 1.1.1.2, .1 if I'm running our OSPF or EHRP, it becomes mandatory for you to advertise this interface because when you advertise the interface, then only it will send a hello message and the reply will come. But in case of BGP, we are going to configure a manual neighborship. So which means even though if you do not advertise the WAN interfaces, still your BGP will work. So it's not mandatory. But if you still want to advertise, you can advertise, but I'm just saying it's not really required. So in my lab also, I, I did not advertise any of the WAN interfaces. So I'm just going with simple, basic LAN interfaces. And what's the next command? Neighbor. Router 1 is forming the neighborship with 12, with 12.001 12 and remote AS is 500. Now similar way, router 1 is forming the neighborship with router 3 with 13.001 and router 1 is forming the neighborship with router 4 with 14001 so full mesh neighborship again here so I'm going to use full mesh because we discussed in the previous video BGP split horizon rule to overcome that we need to have a full mesh neighborship done now the same thing I'm going to do on the router 2 as well so I can use notepad but if you're doing for the first time you can try you can always try doing some configurations and you will I'll go to router BGP 500 and then no auto summary, no synchronization, neighbor 11.001 which is my router 1 500. Router 2 is forming the neighborship with router 1 on 11.001, router 3 and router 4. Done. And after that, advertising my LAN interface. Finish. The same configurations I'm going to do on the router 3. No auto summary, no synchronization, neighbor 11.001, remote AS is 500. Router 3 forming the neighborship with router 1 and router 2 and router 4. 
okay so because 13 dot network is my local network and advertising my LAN interface so on the router 4 router BGP 500 no order summary no synchronization neighbor 11.001 remote AS is 500 and router 4 is forming the neighborship is 1 2 3 so 1 2 and 3 that is router 3 and advertising my own LAN interface done so I think I I finished the configuration on all the four routers and if everything is okay the neighborship should come up that is what the finally we need to make sure the neighborship has to be up if the neighborship is not coming then we need to verify our configurations if you try to misconfigure any of these things then definitely the neighborship will not come up so if I give show IP BGP summary you can you can see the neighborship is active so whenever you see active or idle there is some problem so let us try to figure out what is the problem here so when you see active means there is a problem here let's try to figure out active means it's actually trying to establish a neighborship but it's still trying it's not able to establish a neighborship so we need to troubleshoot here now so we need to do some troubleshooting that's what BGP active troubleshooting so whenever you see the message called active now there are some possible reasons or possible things we need to keep in mind and we need to check these things so the first thing neighbor peering in the wrong address now sometimes what happens we try to misconfigure the IP address wrong so probably the IP address might be wrong I think in our configurations or in our routers we configured everything correctly 12.001, 13.001, or you can even verify with this command show run section section BGP pipe symbol in the section BGP now if we try to verify on all the routers the configuration of IP address is correct at the same time the remote AS is also correct so sometimes what happens we may end up doing some misconfiguration sometimes the peering might be in the wrong AS now in our scenario this is not the problem because I've verified it's perfect neighbors do not have the neighbor statement on one side of the router now there's one more possible reason if the neighborship is not coming now sometimes what happens we configure on the router 1 and we for we may forget to Configure on the router too. Sometimes we configure only one side and expecting the neighborship to come up without doing the configuration on the other end. So now we need to make sure that both the sides, the configurations are correct. I think here we did everything perfect. So these two are not in our case. We have configured with the right address and both the ends we have configured the neighbor's command. Now the third thing might be misconfiguration of your AS number. Sometimes what happens, we end up misconfiguration like by mistake I I have typed instead of typing 500 I have typed 50 or I have typed 5000 something like this or maybe you type some other number misconfiguration autonomous system number mismatch so if you configure this router in AS 500 and the remote AS 500 here do not match remote AS command if that doesn't match you will see some uh, messages like I got some messages here so when you see these messages this is a sample output of what you will see if you have a neighborship in a wrong case. You can see peering in a wrong case, and then it's going to say all F's here, and then remote is. So it will send a notification message saying that it is going to disconnect the neighbors, and the reason is the peering is in wrong case. Now the first three we have verified, and we have confirmed that these three are not the possible issues. Now finally the last thing we need to check is neighbor do not have the route to the source IP of the BGP open packet generated by the router okay so now whenever we are trying to establish the neighborship between any of the two routers like here it is going to send open send message that saying that I am your neighbor and router 2 is going to reply that open confirm messages now here this open confirm message is not coming from the router 2 and the reason for that is reachability now the reason for that is that might be in the reachability now router 1 is forming the neighborship with router 2 by using 12.001 and router 1 forming the neighborship with router 3 using 13.001 that is a loop back and router 1 forming the neighborship with router 4 on 14.001 so 122, 123 and 124 right but 
we need to first verify whether you are able to ping to these neighbor's addresses or not reachability let us try that is the first thing we need to check if the router one do not have the route of these destinations then definitely it will not be able to communicate now router one is forming the neighborship 12 13 and 14 but router one don't know exactly where is 12 where is 13 where is 14 you can see the routes are not there is no route in the routing table which is going to tell where is 12 where is 13 where is 14 in our previous videos if you remember we have configured the neighborship with directly connected interface and by default the router knows its own directly connected interfaces so there won't be any problem over there but now here so I'm going to say show IP route and I'm saying 12.001 so that network is not at all present in my routing table now how we can expect so I'm going to send open send message but I don't know where is 12 I don't know where is 13 I don't know where is 14 so that's the problem here now reachability is the next thing we need to check okay so whenever you see this type of messages make sure that the first step is make sure that you have a connectivity to the neighbor the neighbor address you should be able to access you should be able to ping but you can see it's not able to ping because the reason is so here the neighbor do not have entries for 12 13 14 means router 1 don't know where is 12 because it's not in the routing table where is 13 where is 14 now here the router 1 do not know how to reach those neighbors now to learn about these neighbors BGP again relies on IGP this is very important point okay so the main reason I, I didn't run any of the IGP inside I want you to know this so many people uh, think that if you're running BGP they we really don't need to run any of the IGP protocols or EHRP so it's not like that even though you're running BGP and BGP is to communicate outside the AS but within the AS we still use our IGP protocols internal gate internal gateway protocols like RAP EHRP OSPF and again to reach this loopback that is router 12 loopback to reach this loopbacks it is going to rely on your IGP protocol so you have to make sure that you also advertise you also advertise the loopback interfaces which are used for IBGP neighborship this should be advertised inside your IGP now here in my example I'm not running any any IGP as of now that's the reason it's not coming up so what I'll do is I'll try to configure IGP inside so I didn't configure I'm going to configure it now 